Hello to all students. I hope you are doing fine. In this video lecture, we are going to discuss joints, their structure, their types and their function. As you know that our body contain around 206 bones in an adult, while the number of joints varies from 250 to 350 depending upon the age and type of person. Anyhow, where two bones meet with each other, the articulation of these bones is known as joint. Joints can be classified into three major categories. Number one, fibrous joints. Number two, cartilaginous joints. And number three, synovial joints. Let's discuss them in detail. Fibrous joints are made up of fibrous connective tissue and uh, these are also known as synarthrosis. Synarthrosis are those joints which are immovable. It means that they cannot show any kind of movement once they are formed. Fibrous joints can be classified into three groups, sutures, syndesmosis, gomphosis. Sutures are specialized fibrous joints which are present in the cranium which is a part of our skull. As you can see in this diagram, this is a skull and the upper portion of skull is known as cranium. And as you know that cranium is composed of flat bones, frontal bone, occipital bone, parietal bone and temporal bones. These bones are held together with help of fibrous connective tissue along with collagen protein to form a very strong bond which are known as sutures. So I have taken a cross section from right over here to show in detail. This is a flat bone of the cranium and you can see suture lines right over here because these are the joints which are present in the cranium. So these sutures are fibrous joints which provide very um, strong joint in our skull to protect the fragile brain. The second type of fibrous joints are syndesmosis. Syndesmosis are present in our forearm where two bones are present, radius and ulna, right over here. Radius and ulna are joined together with specialized fibrous connective tissue, which is known as joint, is, are known as syndesmosis. Syndesmosis, as you can see right over here, in the, in the form of a red band present between radius and ulna. So these joints help to twist our forearm and keep the both the bones together. Third type of uh, fibrous joints are known as gomphoses. Gomphoses are present in our jaws. As you know that our upper jaw is known as maxilla while lower jaw is known as mandible. Inside the oral cavity there are gums and these gums contain sockets in which our teeth are embedded. Look at this diagram. This is a part of a gum which contain bony uh, socket and in, in which a teeth has been embedded. So the joint between teeth and this socket are known as gomphoses. So gomphoses provide the space or place for our teeth. And these are very strong joints which are formed in our mandibles and the maxilla for grinding and chewing and biting our food. So these are also very important joints. So fibrous joints uh, are comprised of fibrous connective tissue. They also contain collagen fibers and they do not contain any joint cavity and they are immovable. The second type of joints are known as cartilaginous joints. Cartilaginous joints are made up of cartilage and they are known as amphiarthrosis and they are slightly movable. These are of two types, synchondrosis and symphysis. Synchondrosis are present in the long and short bones of our body. If I take the cross section of a long bone of our leg which is known as femur, as you can see that 
on the terminal portion of the bone there is a layer of cartilage in the form of a blue color this layer of cartilage is known as hyaline cartilage which is transparent and non flexible and the disc of cartilage is also present inside the spongy bone of this bone so these bones are uh, specialized these joints are specialized joints which are present at the terminal portion of the bones at the joint helps to reduce the friction between the bones and also helps in the growth of the bones the second type of cartilaginous joints are known as symphysis these are present in the pelvic region of our body as you know that there are two bones in our pelvic region known as coxal bone this is one coxal bone and this is the second coxal bone these are made up of three other bones ilium ischium and pubis and between these two bones there is a, a last portion of vertebral column and just beneath the vertebral column there is a joint which is made up of fibrocartilage which is little bit elastic elastic <clears throat> so this uh, joint symphysis provide flexibility to our pelvic bones during childbirth or during the walking running or any kind of body movements there is an also cartilaginous joints present in our spines as you know that our vertebral column contain so many small bones which are known as vertebrae so this is the first vertebra and this is the other vertebra in between these two vertebrae there is a disc which is known as intervertebral disc which is made up of fibrocartilage the outer portion of this disc is known as an uh, annulus fibrosus while the central portion is known as nucleus pulposus this disc present between these two vertebrae provide compressibility to our spines during jumping running or any other bending movement of our body <clears throat> so these are very important joints so these joints show slightly movement in our body the third types of joints are known as synovial joints synovial joints are also known as diarthrosis and they are freely movable as you know that when there is a movability the 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 joint will be uh, weak while if the movement of the joint is less the joint will be strong so synovial joints are also known as diarthrosis and they are freely movable i have taken an example of a synovial joints right over here this is the first bone and this is the other bone in between these two bones there is a joint this joint is surrounded by a membrane which is known as synovial membrane which forms a capsule this capsule contain a fluid which is known as synovial fluid due to the presence of synovial fluid and synovial membrane these joints are known as synovial joints so this synovial fluid contain an very important component known as hyaluronic acid which along with cartilage they provide lubrication to the joints and reduce the friction between two bones Uh, which is very important because these uh, these joints provide lot of motions lot of locomotion lot of movements so these synovial joints can be divided into different types depending upon the location and structure number 1 condyloid joints condyloid joints are present between radius and carpals this is the bone of forearm radial and the carpals are present in our wrist the joints between these bones are known as condyloid ball and socket joint these joints are in the form of a socket made up of a bone and the other bone is like a ball which fixes articulates in this socket and form a ball sac ball and socket joint this type of joint can provide many types of uh, movements they can be uh, forward backward or any other movement third type of uh, synovial joints are hinge joints hinge joints can uh, work like a hinge of a door they can only move in one direction like our elbow and our knee and joints present in our fingers 
Saddle joints are present between carpals and metacarpals. Carpals are the bones of our wrist, while metacarpals are the bones of our palm. The joints between these bones are known as saddle joints. Pivot joints are present between atlas and axis, which, is, which are first and the second vertebra of our spine's vertebral column on which our skull uh, resides. And uh, the joint between these two bones is known as pivot joint. So these uh, synovial joints, which are very different types, they show different type of movement. So according to the movement, uh, these joints can be classified. <clears throat> so if we look at the movements, there is a non-axial movement, which is slipping movement or uh, gliding movement. So such joints like wrist and the ankle, uh, they provide non-axial movement. Any, they do not show any directional movement. So these joints provide non-axial movement elbow and knee are the joints which show uni-axial movement which is one in one plane so you can see elbow right over here which is movement in only one plane that's it knuckles show biaxial movement knuckles in our hand they can move forward and they can also move backward so these uh, two plane movement is shown by knuckles which is known as biaxial movement Multi-axial movement is shown by our shoulder and hip joint because they are ball and socket. They can move in multiple directions, usually in three planes. Our shoulder can move forward, backward and sideways. It cannot move inward because our body stops our shoulder to move inside. Along with these type of movements, our body also show and different types of other movements along with the muscles and different bones of the body like the flexion, bending of arm, extension, straightening of arm, abduction, uh, moving of the body parts away from the body, adduction, moving of the body parts towards the body, rotation and there are so many other types of movements which are shown by these joints. So these joints are very important for our body for locomotion and movements. That's all for today. Hopefully it makes sense and I'll see you in the next lecture. Until then, bye.